So we talked about Rolle's theorem, and if we are given those three conditions on a function, it will guarantee that we've got the derivative equal to zero somewhere on the interval. Well, what if we get rid of one of those conditions? What if we get rid of that last condition, f of a equals f of b? So what if the endpoints are no longer the same height? What can we say about the function then? Well, certainly there's no guarantee that f prime equals zero. So this first picture here does have the function continuous on a closed interval, and it does have the derivative existing on the open interval, but certainly the derivative value is positive everywhere. So it, there's no guarantee that we're gonna have a zero derivative anymore. But there is something else that we can say about the derivative. So in both of these cases, the function that I've drawn is continuous, and the function that I've drawn is differentiable on the open interval. If we get rid of the endpoint condition, there's a neat statement that we can say. So if you take a look here, I'm going to draw a line through the endpoints. And the slope of this line is f of b minus f of a, so y2 minus y1 over b minus a. Now, that is called a secant slope. Sometimes people like to call it the average slope, or another word for average is mean. There's a neat little thing you should observe, that on this graph, if I were to draw a tangent line right there and right there, I see that they have the same slope. So these all have the same slope. And in fact, if you kept testing this with other pictures, other pictures, other pictures, it looks like there exists, or there exist points on the graph where the tangent slope equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, the secant slope. So the tangent slope equals the secant slope. So this is more than just a coincidence. This, in fact, does turn out to be a true statement. And it's something that you can prove using Rolle's theorem. Now, we aren't going to prove it here. We'll, we will just state the result as a theorem. This is called the mean value theorem because it's talking about the secant slope, which is an average, which you could think of as the mean. So if your function is continuous on the closed interval, just like before, and if the function is differentiable on an open interval, just like before, then there exists a point C somewhere in the open interval AB, just like before, such that the following conclusion is true. F prime of C is F of B minus F of A over B minus A. And the picture that goes along with this is just like I drew before. If you have a function with no holes, no gaps, no jumps, no breaks, no pointy things, and you talk about drawing it, there has to be at least one point where the tangent line on the function matches the tangent line there. And that's what the mean value theorem says. This is probably one of the most important theorems in math, and it's hard to kind of impress that upon you in this course, but as you keep going in your next calculus course and other places, the mean value theorem comes up a lot. The mean value theorem is really useful because it connects derivative values to the values of the function on a certain interval. Now note, if f of a equals f of b, this collapses down to zero. So we get Rolle's theorem again. So that means that Rolle's theorem is just a special case of the mean value theorem. Now, as before, there are conditions 
and there is a conclusion. And the conclusion is the result you get when you satisfy the terms of the deal. So the mean value theorem is very, very important, but for your sake, it's probably going to look abstract for now. Why do we use the mean value theorem? Why do we care? Because it allows us to convincingly and once and for all prove certain things. And those facts are going to be useful to us in the next class when we try to develop ways to find minima and maxima. But for now, we'll just practice using it. So suppose I have a function where by some mystery, I know that the derivative is always between 3 and 5 for all x values. So for all real numbers. I would like to prove that the value of this mystery function, whatever it is, has this relationship. Now, in some way, this might seem crazy to you. How am I supposed to say anything about this function? All I know is that one little fact about its derivative. Well, knowing this fact about derivatives is really important. And that's what the mean value theorem is trying to impress upon you. That knowing something about a derivative can tell you a lot about a function. For example, since we have this relationship, so since the derivative is always trapped between 3 and 5 for negative infinity to positive infinity, this implies that f prime exists on the entire real line, which implies that f is differentiable on the entire real line, which implies that f is continuous on the entire real line. So this function is really nice and well behaved. I have no idea what its graph looks like, but I know that it can't have any holes, gaps, jumps, breaks, pokey things, vertical asymptotes, vertical tangent lines, nothing. In that sense, it's pretty nice. Now, just like I was saying earlier, when I know something about a function on an entire interval, I can collapse that down to whatever sub-interval I like. Now, I'm going to look at what the question is asking me to prove. And the question is asking me to prove something about this function at the value of 8 and the value of 2. So based on these two things, I am going to now specifically tailor this to what I want. I am now going to say, look, because my function is differentiable everywhere, it also means that it's differentiable on the open interval 2 to 8. Because it's continuous everywhere, I can pick whatever subinterval I want. And I'm going to choose the closed subinterval of 2 to 8. Because of that, I now get to say, look, the mean value theorem applies to my function on the interval 2 to 8. And the conclusion of the mean value theorem says, look, there has to exist. So there exists some value of C that lives between 2 and 8 such that the following is true. The conclusion of the mean value theorem says your magical point C has to satisfy this relationship. There is a point C that must make this equation true. Or another way to put it, that f prime of C is f of 8 minus f of 2 over 6. And the only thing I have is that C is somewhere between 2 and 8. Can't be 2, can't be 8, but it could be anything in between. So how is this going to help me? Okay. I have been told 
that the derivative, whatever value of the derivative you have, it always has to be trapped between 3 and 5 for every value of c between negative infinity and positive infinity. Now the connection that you should make is that if f of c is equal to this stuff, that means this stuff has to satisfy the same condition. In other words, f of 8 minus f of 2 over 6 has to be between 3 and 5. If you simply reorganize this inequality, what you'll find is the outcome that we want. The value of the function, the difference in the values has to live between 18 and 30. And because of that, we can conclude our problem. Now this might seem really abstract to you, but again, the point of learning about the mean value theorem is that in the next class, it's going to help us say something about functions and their behavior. And that's going to help us figure out where we have minima and maxima.